rise and shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Wait, so I'm going to bring Monday us in? through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Are we talking? Are we live? We're, we're live. Don't talk over the intro. Oh, okay. So I'm, I, this is, <laughs> welcome to Jeanette's planning. Wait, wait, I have to do the thing. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. And then you say good morning. You get What's the fourth one. up? Good morning, Aurora. There it is. We've got oh, this. God, yes. We're there. We are, we, we're here. We're here. We're it's here. Friday morning. It's beautiful. It's Alyssa hot. Cone, good morning to you. We, it is nice. It is beautiful today. It's, it it's beautiful. summer arrived for just, <laughs> just in time for the end of May. BTP, how are you? Um, Doing pretty well. That's well. Good. Jen Mendoza, how are you today? Good morning, Hi. Jen. And Brooke Shanley, what up? What up? Good morning, Brooke. We're going to start off with the serious news right now. Today is the anniversary of the ending of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. And this day in history. This day in history. Um, it was known as the best known, it was the best known traveling circus in the United States in the 20th and early 21st centuries. But we were talking about it, and we mentioned that and came up with, you know, animal exploitation yeah. coupled with, like, declining sales was really the, the nail in the coffin for such a thing. And you look at it now, and it does seem somewhat barbaric. Yeah, so here's the thing about, about business models and uh, capitalism working the way that it's supposed to, right? Is, you know, there, <laughs> when this, uh, when the circus, when, uh, when, uh, when Barnum and Bailey announced that the circus was going away when they were going to shutter their doors, right? It was mm -hmm. a lot of people were really sad about it. And they did a lot of these like farewell stories and things like that um, in the news about it. And, um, and there were a lot of people who were really angry about it, saying that this was something like, oh, the activists, like the animal rights activists and stuff were just, they were the ones that shut it down. Right. And I think that that is maybe an erroneous, I mean, maybe in a way, but I think what really happened with the end of the circus, this kind of circus anyway, is that it really is just um, people putting their money to things that, you know, are more in line with their values, right? I think a lot of people didn't want to go to the circus because they knew about, like, how animals were being treated, particularly, like, Yeah, what they're doing to those horses after they dance around the stage. Right, or in order to get them to dance right. right like there's a lot of pretty inhumane um techniques that go into making elephants work like that right. um which if you've ever uh when i was in thailand i uh did some volunteer work for a couple of days at a, an elephant sanctuary up in chiang mai and they you know kind of demonstrate like how just how um intelligent and how emotionally intelligent um elephants are in particular and what it really takes to get them to make them perform and uh, how awful that is so um and and the thing is the circus still exists it's just not that kind of circus anymore it's not a circus that makes its money off of that right like you can still go to Cirque du Soleil for instance I think people are more interested in putting their money in something like that that's more that kind of that expression of the circus to art be an form elephant with all those people in the crowd <sighs> right i would i would lose it on the crowd too myself man i would I think yeah I five don't minutes in as soon as they get the popcorn i'm charging the stand that's right <laughs> that's right give me some of those nasty circus peanut things does anybody like those no, that the circus is one of the, it's one of the nastiest candies. candies. Yeah, is, they are is. just awful. Oh, man, I don't, I, you know what I'm talking about? I haven't had one in a long time. You know what I'm talking about? Those yeah. It's kind of like sweet bread that's puffy, but when you bite it, if you notice, like if when you bite, it just dissipates all and coats your mouth and your it's tongue. Just it's just gross. Yeah, it's nasty. Like I think I had one of those once and I was like, why would anybody eat this willingly? Right. I don't know. They darn sure ain't no Chico sticks. But that's not what we have to talk about today. We have <laughs> other news. Um, Jeanette, I... I heard in the news that the pet ordinance passed committee. Now, is that 
Yes. Something so like, okay. the pet ordinance. So the humane pet ordinance um, is. Uh, we've talked about it before on the show. I'm talking about animals. We're talking all all about cute it's furry animal. animals. How much? <laughs> it's an animally based. Well, I really are. feel like you all should have assumed that if Jeanette got an hour to talk to you each week, you would end up talking about cute furry <laughs> furry animals. Like we did most turtles of the, the other. Time. We did turtles other, last week. Yeah. New rule every week: some animal story. Okay. All right. We're we're in agreement. I like that. Agreement. I like that. Because people they love the animals. We used to joke in journalism all the time in, in like Illinois that. that if you want us like people to read your story, it had to have a dog, Lincoln, and like cute kids or something. So like right. if a cute kid is walking his dog and it digs up a bone that belonged to Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> you're talking like front page story for like months. Right. So <laughs> right. kid in Compton discovers a T Rex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that wearing a Lincoln hat, like it has to have Lincoln. <laughs> right. Yeah. True. Yeah. Right. In Compton, if you find the Tupac Compton. skull. <laughs> right. Yeah. I guess that would be the, the Tupacosaurus. 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 All right. So. <laughs> Back to the humane ordinance. So, uh, the one of the um, Aurora City Council committees and the r- rules committee, a uh, rules administration and procedures committee, which Rap. will be relevant in a little bit because we're going to talk all about committees, mm-hmm. and I know you're all really excited to hear about committees. Um, rules administration and procedures, just the same word, three, pretty much the three same word, three. Yeah, times. basically, yeah. Rules administration and procedures committee is like the rules committee. Rules, rules, Let's just right. be the rules, rules, rules. Right. Committee. Thank you. So um, I guess a rule and a procedure are slightly different, but they're both a part of administering things. Um, (laughs) One must administer. One must administer rules and procedures. So uh, anyway, the humane ordinance passed to that committee, which means from the committee, it still has to go to city council for a final vote. Um, But what this does is it's going to prohibit the sale of dogs and cats. And is it all animals or is it just dogs and cats? That I don't know. Somebody read read. It says it says banning sales of animals Animals. at pet stores that come for breeders. Yeah, my guess is a yeah. From my my guess is that is really going to apply to like dogs and cats and maybe like bunnies. But like um, the. The way that uh, it'll work now is that you won't be able to sell um, animals from breeders in pet stores um, unless they come from an approved rescue. And so then in addition to this ban, there the, the plan is that the city will also create an animal commission. And then the animal commission will be the Aurora Animal Commission will be will have a staff member working with this commission that will maintain a list of um, approved rescue organizations. So my we have added a whole layer of government here uh, and an animal commission. An animal commission. So basically, they'll be able to like look at the different rescues and kind of investigate them a little bit and be like, yes, this one is a legitimate rescue. No, this quote unquote animal rescue is a backyard breeder um and they're full of it right like so all you listeners whoever gets that job well email me because i want that guy or gal on the show (laughs) that that, that person's getting my guess is that this will not be a full-time job what it will probably be is a staff liaison so someone who's already working maybe in animal control or Mm -hmm. somewhere um it might be the animal control director or something like that will be a liaison so it'll just get added to their responsibilities where they'll work with the uh, commission so which will probably be a couple of representatives from right. from the community, right? So uh, basically sort of like volunteer gigs with one staff member to help you out part-time with it. So that's definitely some good progress over this issue, though, since this has been going on. Yeah, yeah. So we've gone back and forth on this a little bit. There's Hello, been a little Victoria bit of... Cons- There's been a little bit of concern uh, over, like, how much is too much regulation, how much is regulation that doesn't actually do anything, right? Because you can ban pet sales, but then create this loophole for these... Um, uh, these uh, rescues that actually turn out to not be rescues that turn out to be backyard breeders. And there are many, many, many legitimate, like good rescues in, in this area. My, my own personal dog who is a hot mess of a dog. Uh, she is from a rescue and I love her dearly. Uh, Rover rescue. Shout out. River to rescue. Rover. Rover res- rescue. Rover, Rover rescue. Shout out. Shout they, out to Rover rescue. Yeah. They, they do amazing work. It's a home based rescue. So, you know, you've got a lot of those, um, in the area. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so so from here, they're going to take this proposal and they are going to, um, oh yeah, it's dogs, cats, and rabbits. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to take it to um, the city council for a final vote. The ordinance came after the Rules Administration and Procedures Committee spent seven months studying what to do, taking testimony from many people and officials both in favor of allowing pet stores to sell animals from breeders and those favoring abandoned practice. The work was done after Naperville passed its humane ordinance and two pet stores that sell animals that come from breeders moved across Route 59 to Aurora Franco in his last meeting as the committee's chairman. That the testimony was at times eye-opening but at other times frustrating. Quote, Our goal was to ensure that the inhumane treatment of animals was not going to make its way into Aurora. I believe we got to where we wanted to go, end quote. Yes. Bug said he feared, my bad, the ordinance would create a loophole that would ban bad breeders, but also cut out responsible breeders. Yeah, I think uh, it, what has become abundantly clear from this whole conversation is, A, who, on the, like, who are your really, really big animal lovers on the, uh, on the council who have been following this the whole time and have been really like vocal for it, right? Because... Uh, older women, um, Patty uh, Smith. Patty Smith. Shout out. Yes, I keep thinking that that's not right because it, like there's the other Patty Smith, right? Who's like really famous, but like yeah, like the rock star or whatever. Anyway, um, older <laughs> Patty, older woman Patty Smith looks kind of like she played guitar once. Doesn't she? She does kind of. She's got right. this kind of like. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she lo- she looks like she was cool or still is cool. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, uh, Patty Smith is cool. She's cool? I she's sat cool. next, I haven't to, her, met, I I haven't sat next met to her at a golf, at, a, at an event at a, at um the Aurora Country Club once. No, no, no. What's the place on Orchard? What golf course is that way up Orchard on Orchard? Orchard Valley. Orch- is that it? Yeah. They do brunch there sometimes on Orchard Road. Like yeah, on the side I was Orchard. there. Um. And Patty Smith was like, you can sit right here. And I sat down. She's cool, man. She's, She's cool? cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to She's Alderman cool. Smith. Shout out to Alderman Smith. Uh, and uh, Carl Franco has been real vocal about this. And then we found out that uh, Alderman Emmanuel Lamas has never had a pet. And so I continue our our call to like somebody get this Donate man. Donate that man a squirrel. Get him. You know, <laughs> this, this poor guy is probably like allergic, you know. Like, <laughs> he, he, he allergic he to can't. like everything. He's too young to be. You know, have you ever watched the meetings, though? No. He's always looking kind of sad. What's up sad. with Emmanuel Lama? He's always looking it's like... It's because he doesn't have a pet. I think That's so. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's always looking like... We gotta get, like, angry. let's find out if he's allergic. Let's get him something hypoallergenic. You, you bring up a good point, though. <laughs> it may not be that he doesn't like dogs or cats. The man could really have get the puffy yeah, eye when he's like, around. Like, I'm not assuming bird. that he, he doesn't like dogs or and like, cats. Or like uh, like a fish. Get like a little betta fish. Yeah. Something. Something right. to love and love He'd be allergic to a betta fish, I don't think. Earthworms. Yeah. The time is now 8.14 a.m. Um, pet rock. <laughs> good morning, Norma Peterson. Good morning, Mary Foltz. Thank you, Mary Foltz. Oh, and good morning, Dora. Hello there. All you great, wonderful people are here with us in the morning time. All right, now let's let's. Okay, so that's, moving on. So we've got all of our animal stories we got in for the, the day. Animals, yeah. So now, okay, so this is going to City Council, yeah. and uh, yeah. do we know what day it's going to City Council? No, because I haven't posted agendas yet for the next City Council meeting. The next City Council meeting is, I want to say, it's Tuesday. It is. It'll be um, Tuesday, the twenty fifth. Ah, yeah. So the City Council's <laughs> Committee of the Whole will look at it on May twenty fifth. So Committee of the Whole meeting is the one that, um, yeah, you sh- uh, yes. So. May 25th. You are listening to Jeanette Splaining on Good Morning Aurora. Now, Jeanette, here's the thing. Good morning, Josue. I heard something else in the news. Yeah. I don't know if it's... You hear so many things in the news. There's something about Oswego and this wall. Yeah, there's a wall coming. There's a wall coming in Oswego. To Oswego. Can you let us know? Yes, it will be in my very workplace, actually, for the next whole week and a half. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this. All in all, you're just uh, another brick in the wall. Put that song it's, in the comments if you know it. It's, it's, not a, it's not a brick wall, it's a movable wall. Okay. So, uh, it is, uh, yeah, this is the. Um, Middle East Conflicts Wall of Honor, and it is a, currently it's a, they keep it in Oregon. Um, this is the first time that it'll be on display outside of 
um, the the Oregon region in mm -hmm. this its current iteration. And uh, this is a wall that honors um, those who have died since 2001 uh, in conflicts in the Middle East. So um, uh, it'll be on display 24 hours a day at Oswego Village Hall that you can go visit it. Um, and it arrives tomorrow. So what's going to happen? No, wait, today. Oh my God. Today's Friday. It arrives today. You guys. The wall comes today. The wall comes, oh, no. the wall <laughs> comes today. No, the this wall is, is Godzilla. Right? <laughs> it, it, no, it's coming today. So we're going to have this, um, caravan of, I don't know if caravan, an escort of, um, of emergency vehicles and uh, motor, like the veterans motorcycle clubs, I think are all in on it. Um, from uh, coming from the Iowa border to escort it to Oswego. Um, so that'll be happening. This problem that's happening probably like right now or starting mm -hmm. very soon. Uh, it's expected to arrive around noonish at Village Hall. They'll be, um, it, it'll arrive, they'll start assembling it, and then tomorrow at 9 30 a.m., this wall mm -hmm. gets, um, uh, we'll have opening ceremonies. Uh, FYI, there's a rifle salute uh, as part of the ceremony, so you don't call the cops if you hear rifles around 9.30 tomorrow morning in Oswego. Well, these are the good guys firing it. Uh, well, so they they, these are just, well, yeah. they're just, they're these not. These are patriots. It's, it's not yeah. that, they're, they're just not firing any. It just yeah. sounds like they're firing it. They're not, they're not shooting live. This is America. Life. This is. They're yeah. not shooting live ammo, so you don't have to call the cops for the, the non-live ammo. Um, they're not shooting live ammo? They're not, No. Ceremony when maybe when, it's not uh, prepare your anymore. prepare your dogs that are yes, afraid of. but like typically when you shoot a right, gun ceremoniously, you noises. do not use live ammo for that. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so it starts at nine thirty. Uh, we've got the um acting director of the Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs will be the keynote speaker tomorrow. Uh, it's at Oswego Village Hall, and then in addition to the wall coming and your ability to visit. This wall, which is actually pretty cool. Um, it was started by a high schooler back in um, 2003. So a high school senior, which was also when I was a high school senior. Um, I don't know what I was doing with my time my senior year of high school. But uh, uh, she built this wall that has um, the faces of all of the people who had died. And these like all of the... the um, uh, people in the military who had died as a part of this conflict. So it was kind of like this act of love from this, this kid um, who would have had, you know, people her own age going off to war. Right. So, um, and then it has kind of been taken over by different organizations and grown since then. So um, the, uh, so you can see all the faces and names of the fallen who are on this wall, but in addition to the wall, uh, there's all kinds of events happening. There is a um, several concerts. So Starlifter, which is the the Air Force band of Mid America, which is apparently like a which is a really big deal. I guess they are coming on Tuesday. Uh, Dog and a corn, and he go. What was the name of the band again? It's called Starlifter, which Starlifter. I guess is right. A, Google that, baby. I, I yeah, that, that, that's either yeah. Uh, like, I guess I was gonna say that also sounds like a, uh, it's a, a video game, like like a Sailor no, Moon it's character. A kind of, yeah, it's a kind Star of. Lifter. No, yeah, guys, yeah. it's a kind of airplane, apparently. I don't know my airplanes very well, but I guess it's like named after a kind of airplane. The it's only the Air airplane I'm familiar with is Jefferson. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. My girl's little starship? Uh, they, were, they turned into a starship in the 70s. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So they were, they were an airplane. They did a lot of drugs and then decided they were a starship. The Lockheed C-141 Starlifter is go. a military strategic airlifter. Dope. So, hey, look, I know I know a thing about military stuff. Who knew? Please clap for Jeanette because Jeanette deserves. She is. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, what up? So. Um, oh, snap. The kids love it. Dang. In addition, the 144th Army Band, they'll be here. That's an Illinois um, Reserve Band. The, uh, um, the Springbrook Pops con will, uh, Orchestra will be doing a patriotic concert there will be a street mm, dance mm, 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 um next weekend uh on main street so um you know it's uh starring whiskey fist so if you want to go get uh get yourself some drinks down at uh the as we go brewing company and then go uh you know do a little dancing on main street you can do that you've got fist. i would fist. encourage all of you guys to take advantage in this because i mean next month pretty soon drinking and dancing in the street is not going to be 
something that you could typically do. We're not we're not drinking in the streets. And, well, so I think you might have to drink the drinks at Oswego Brewing Company and then oh. go dance. I'm not really sure on the road. So don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, I was thinking that we could just stand on like Route 30. Well, it'll be on, on Main Street, Main Street okay, which yeah. is not route, which is a much smaller street yeah. than Route 30. Please don't drink and stand in the middle of Route 30. I don't know anything about Oswego, so I'm learning. Okay, this, this all right, very good. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, and then there's uh, there's there's a couple other events uh, happening. There's a car show this weekend. Lots of stuff. So there's lots of if you are looking for free things to do. Um, you can mosey on down to Oswego for the next uh, week and a half or so leading up to Memorial Day. Obviously, we're having the parade and all that. So um, Os- OswegoHonorsVeterans.com is the place where you can find all of the details. Shout outs to all of the veterans in Aurora and Oswego. Yeah. And the in the greater Fox Valley. Now, region. there is there is one thing. And I, it, this is not nitpicking, as they say, but I, I, I would like future generations to update documentation Afghanistan is in Asia Afghanistan is in Asia it There's is not nothing really Middle East yeah the, mi- the Middle East which which again this is you know this is not the premise of the bit so this is the right not the point whatsoever but yeah I would like documentation we to we do tend to get a little vague about Afghanistan is in Asia yeah it's pretty far it's pretty far from the middle of the East, I mean, basically. There's not much further. Yeah, right, like, like if you think of, uh, like, um, you know, the current conflict in Israel and mm-hmm. Palestine as being in the Middle East, right? This right. is this is quite far from, like, yeah. you can't walk, like, it's you can't like walk there. Syria is <laughs> the Middle East. Right. Afghanistan is like, you know, it's like Iraq Zion, is... Illinois, and, and Arizona. Well, right. <laughs> you know, they're nowhere near each other. The Not time close. is now 8.23 a.m. You're listening to Jeanette's planning on Good Morning Aurora. Hello, Tracy Duran. How are you this wonderful day? Tracy, let me tell you something. I hope that you are having a great day. And I'm drinking Treadwell, Tracy. And I have to tell you that Tracy Duran's history as an author is great. Please check out her website, TracyDuran.com. Put it in the chat for the people, Tracy. <laughs> He's asking like she got answer. Right. <laughs> I hope she answers. <laughs> All right. Um, so real quick before we get into the next piece of information and news, there is some downtown Aurora updates for you guys to listen to. So check this out because I know that you don't know this yet because this is breaking news. <laughs> we got the breaking that was news perfect. music. That was I love perfect. it. All right. Business grants given out. The Aurora Downtown Group has given out, uh, has approved rather, small business grants totaling nearly $40,000 this week. The announcement serves as a bellwether that downtown businesses are ready for post pandemic growth. Aurora Downtown, the nonprofit group that oversees the downtown special service area, will distribute grant funds to 13 businesses. The organization's Business Attraction and Retention Committee, BARC, offered a, BARC with a C, offered a variety of small businesses, small business grants of up to $5,000 to downtown businesses. The group announced the grants in February, and businesses had until May 1st to apply. Recipients include QT3 Fitness, Catherine's Place, Heath Holding, LLC, Wickwood House, J.H. Real Estate Partners, Indiro Coffee, The Perch, Hayden's Photography, the Aurora Historical Society, the Aurora Regional Fire Museum, the Fox Valley Music Foundation, the Riverfront Playhouse, and the Yeeti. What's Catherine's Place? I don't know Catherine's Place. I UTP, know. what's Catherine's Place? We can look it up. That's what we have a producer for. Um... Some of the projects include theater soundproofing at the Riverfront Playhouse, jazz concerts hosted by the venue at Mundy Park, and a staying safe exhibit at the Fire Museum. Uh, Shouts out to the Aurora Business Attraction and Retention Committee and the Aurora Downtown Group. Marissa Mone, what up? What up? Okay. Um, It'd be exciting to see all that fun stuff come back to life. So let's take a quick pause and, and do a do check it. in with people. Uh, let's do it. BTP, how was your week? Uh, it's pretty. It's, it's, the business is called Catherine's Place. Mm-hmm. One in Naperville, but we got This is called Catherine. So this one's spelled K A T H R Y N. Oh, K K K. We're gonna dig into this because if there's a business in town that we don't know about, 
Uh, but the week, week's been good. Work's been a little slow, unfortunately. So, you know, um, at a old sandwich shop. Um, but uh, McCarty Mills, which I'm working there on Sundays now. Mm-hmm. This Sunday was actually really good. It was a really busy day. So I got I to saw kind good of, things. Heard good yeah, things. I got to uh, sort of get a better deep dive experience into that. Speaking of McCarty Mills, they are their one year. one year. Yeah, that's right. One year anniversary one year. is kicking off this year. Can we clap for McCarty Mills? Because they are squad and they are family. <laughs> Word up to the Mills. Congratulations, you guys, on one year in business. And Woo! for those of you. One year of getting us all nice and toasty. 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 I'm sharing uh, local, uh, local um, breweries. That's right. Yeah. You're not gonna like, get. You're not gonna get no Bud Light or Miller High Life there. You're only gonna get uh, Riverlands. You're which, gonna get us. We go Brewing Company, which, Liquid Love, Liquid Love, all that. Right. Which everybody? Like, wow, the viewership just went out when you said no, no Bud Light. Yeah, I was about to say like no hate. We can't on, get no Bush. I'm like <laughs> on occasionally, look, occasionally Baby, there's a mood, right? If you're on a boat, I feel like. I feel like the domestic lager is like official like boating beer, right? Like that's when I feel like I need to. I feel I'm just saying like there's a place uh, there is. for it, right? I haven't been on a boat in a while. Boat I'm deprived. missing a boat, but when I'm on boats, I'm, I'm more of a rum guy. I'm yeah, I mean guy. the other option is claws. Like that's yeah. the I, claws? I feel like yeah, white like claws? the white claw. Yeah, I feel like the Never white claws, white the claw. Trulies, like that. The appropriate time to drink your hard seltzer seltzer is mm-hmm. on a boat or I water no, waterfront of some kind. If you're at the beach or something, you know. Josie Mendoza Geller. Good morning to you, you wonderful friend. You, um, how was your week, Jeanette? Uh, my week has been great. Um, I'm getting, we've been working to get Oswego ready for the wall. So right. that's been a good chunk of my week. Um, it's gardening season, which makes me super, super, super happy. So I've been out, out in the backyard doing some weeding, uh, which is a great opportunity for me to shout out Branch Gardens, I feel like, which is having their, um, uh native plant sale this weekend so saturday and sunday stop on by branch gardens you can pick up your rudbeckia and your uh other native plants uh, out to branch garden your Corey purple Casper, what up your purple cone flowers will be in the stock corner of lake and uh benton, benton. lake and benton let's that's say right. benton yeah you can't miss it it's the place in downtown aurora with all the plants out front so yeah it's right across the street from the uh it's library near the you know, library on near yep. F- warehouse 55 which has some cool stuff so it's like a nice that's a cool little corner right there it to is. get lost and drop some mad cash so definitely uh check out the native plant sale native plants are very important for environment and i'm slowly learning my names of all of them uh, yeah all right stop by yeah. Um, I had a good week too. You guys know that I was with you every single day. All right, now <laughs> let's now, Jeanette. We're a crew. Now. Jeanette, I I heard something else. Oh no, the, the, this is Jeanette's playing, and I want all of you to listen very closely because the minutia of uh, bureaucracy and all that kind of stuff. I love the minutia of bureaucracy. Fun. Minutia, uh, minutia is very fun. I can spell both of those words now too. So. Um, now. I heard something about Metro. Now, let me know if this is correct. Uh-huh. Their full Saturday schedule is uh-huh. returning, uh-huh. but it's it's whack. It's but, but yeah. So the Saturday schedule is coming. So like right. So Metro cut down it, the number of trains that it was running uh, back and forth to the city. Uh, you know, both the weekday and weekend during the pandemic, as expected, because nobody was going into the city because nobody right. wanted to be all crowded up in all of them, like you know, uh, offices like in the loop to work and cough on each other, right? Yeah, and if only you, if if you know what we're talking about, that kind of life, you understand it. It was it's a thing. Ugh, it yeah. is. Uh, it was like office space, but without the fun. Right. It is a thing. Uh, I. Uh, <laughs> I did have a commuting job at one point into the city. Uh, it was not in an office. It was definitely on the street corner for Greenpeace, uh, trying to convince people to give me their credit card numbers for the polar bears. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, which is a tough job. Be nice to the kids who are out there trying to get. Yeah, that's credit a hard card. job. That is a hard job. Uh, that was many moons ago. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so they they cut back uh, the the commuting schedule, which totally makes sense. But now they're they're slowly bringing it back. Beginning uh, May 29th, the Saturday full Saturday schedule will be back. But can we just uh, talk a bit about how the Saturday schedule sucks? Like it has always sucked and it coming back Mm -hmm. to full capacity is still just like great. So if I miss the 820 train, I can't get another train until 1120 at night. Right, like, right. how is that useful for yeah. anybody? And then the bars close inside of the train station. Well, right. you know, the one so, downstairs across from the, the Chinese one. food place that always closes every two years for health concerns, <laughs> um, but opens back up with the same name. Sketch. Um, right. <laughs> word up. That bar is still up until like 10. But then, like, you can't leave Union Station and go get juicy anywhere else because, like, if you think you're just gonna go because to because there's like, nothing around Canada, that late at night, like down well, in the loop, that's not you gotta like a go. haul. You, yeah, yeah, you gotta go like hauling. Yeah. So, like, and then God help you if you get stuck after the twelve forty train in right. like in you are Chicago. now you, in adventures you just, in babysitting. You just like, live in Chicago now. Right, like right. they just they you just pay the extra taxes and you just stay there, right? <laughs> or you pay what a hundred dollars for a cab this yeah like like. an uber or something back man like okay so so what i am saying is that hooray we're very excited that the full schedule is coming back like but i just feel and look metro's broke right but like um just like any other you know major infrastructure that actually in the long haul is good for communities and good for the environment right but like they um it like and you can't keep raising the fees because otherwise no one's gonna take it. Right. But it's just not. It's not great. It's not. It's not great. No, they need to. And you would think we, that after being out of business for a year, losing all that money, they would have come with a brand new with like a thing, a dynamic plan. Like you know what we're gonna do? Yeah. Trains run every hour on the hour. Right. We're gonna or slash something. the price of whatever the hell, and we're gonna we're gonna. Are you okay? I'm you okay. Good? Yeah, it's just coffee. Early in the morning. We're okay. We're the fine. The time is 8.33 a.m. The time is 8.33 a.m. And I am yeah. totally here. We're fine. Oh, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I would have been. I would have taken the weekend pass back to five bucks, something like that. Uh, I would have came dynamic for people. Yeah. Remember you, the weekend pass? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the weekend pass. You could pass. go to Wisconsin with that not, bad boy. Do they not have the weekend pass anymore? They still got it, but it's like, it's like 10 bucks now. 10 bucks. And then the weekend pass ends on Sunday. Ends on Sunday? So like you can't you can't use it Sunday? Like, it's done. Yeah, I think you can't use it. I think, you like, a certain time on Sunday. Uh, like, yeah. at some p.m., it's over with. Uh. Right. So, it, part of it is that, like, look, if you want public infrastructure uh, and public transportation infrastructure, like, we have to put some money into that, right? Like, that's kind of one of those places, like... I think that there would be a lot of support for, you know, even tax dollars and stuff going into making it a system that actually works for people and that then can be sustainable just on writer fees and stuff like that. Make but, Metro great again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Seriously. Love the Metro, but man. Teamsters Local 179 is a proud sponsor of the Veterans Wall Celebration in Oswego. Thank you, Vets. And thank you, Mr. Greg Ellsbury. Shouts out to Teamsters Local 179. That's right. They've got, there are so many uh, organizations that have come behind this thing to sponsor it. Um, uh, I cannot name them all off the top of my head, but um, I did put together the program where they're all in, and there's just a lot of people throwing a lot of um, time and energy and money behind this thing. So, yeah, seriously, if SWGoHonorsVeterans.com, uh, if you are looking for things to do this uh, week, over the next week, and and want to come out and support the veterans in our community. Has, didn't Oswego do something similar recently? I remember when I was working at the uh, a pizza shop down there. Um, several years back. So before I started working down in Oswego, they had the uh, Vietnam Wall. Movement. Oh, that's, that's, right. what, that's yeah. what I'm thinking that's of. Right. Okay. So that was the Vietnam Wall. This is the Middle East conflicts. So or Middle East and uh, Afghanistan, which is technically yeah. in Asia. Um, Tracy Duran tells us that I was correct. Her website is tracyduran.com. Thank you, Tracy. So check that out. Check that out. Okay, before we get into the next time, Victoria tells us there's no appropriate time for bad beer. 
Not even when you're uh, uh, not uh, even when you're mowing lawn, Victoria. Well, Hold yeah, on. Right. Hold that on. is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you're doing hard labor. <laughs> you can't be drinking like a yeah. double IPA while you're like out. Yeah, exactly. You will pass out. Yeah. You get dehydrated. And or you'll you will... stop doing. Right. Stop... Or the lawn yeah. will not get mowed. Because <laughs> you're like, damn, this is a crisp. You need refreshing... something. I need something three yeah. percent. That's not gonna like right. knock me. That's as hydrating and bloating as Seriously. it is. Seriously. <laughs> Drunkifying, right? Drunkifying, intoxicating. You know, the time to drink King Cobra is when you're doing yard work. I don't know what King Cobra is, but I yes. don't drink it either. I don't <laughs> know what it is. Funny story. Once upon a life, I worked at Rothschild Liquor Stores in Chicago on the West Side Ooh. on St. Louis and what was that cross street like Pulaski or something? It was. How was that experience? Man, I, let me tell you. When is your memoir coming out? <laughs> oh my God, that was the wildest. <laughs> it was just. It was God. It was an experience. Anyway, I I wanted to read some. I, there was another. What else we got? Thing that we, we have got to talk things? about before we get into that next. Art Martin Bashirish for my own. I'm gonna hang that up in my home. Aha! There it is. <laughs> Oh, uh, the Aurora Police Homeland Security Investigations Agreement again update. Aurora City Council is set to update an agreement between the uh, Aurora Police Department and Federal Homeland Security Investigations. The agreement will continue a partnership that has been going on since 2007 between the Aurora Police and Homeland Security that involves large scale narcotics and money laundering investigations. The updated agreement would allow the Aurora Police and Homeland Security to continue to work together on such task force investigations. Aurora Police Chief Kristen Zeman told Alderman this week, The long-standing agreement means sometimes Aurora Police officers are assigned to task forces to investigate and take action on narcotic-related offenses. Rumors have been circulating through Aurora, causing some aldermen to get emails with apparent confusion that the agreement has something to do with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which is overseen by Homeland Security, Kristen Zeman, that the Homeland Security investigation is, quote, not the portion of Homeland Security, end quote, dealing with immigration. The time is now 8.38 a.m. You're listening to Jeanette's planning on Good Morning Aurora. Yes, so um, there, there has been some well, what what doesn't get said or doesn't get uh, ex explicitly said in that article um, by the Beacon, thank you, Beacon News, for well, you know your reporting work, um, is uh, the it doesn't directly answer the question of how the Aurora Police Department does work with ICE or whether mm -hmm. whether they do or do not, right? Because that's right. a huge um, controversy just in in communities across the state because a lot of times. Um, immigrations and Customs Enforcement will ask local police departments to do what's called an ICE hold, mm -hmm. right? Which is APD pulls you over for something or like you, whatever. You do something where you come into contact with APD and ICE wants them to run uh, checks against their uh, um, right. Their, uh, their databases and things like that to right. see if they, yeah. So uh, I know we've gone back and forth on the ice hold issue here in Aurora, and I'm not sure where we're currently standing on that, but that would be for future investigation to find out just and where. And future discussion, too. Yeah. And future discussion, yeah. too. Yeah, we'll look into that. Greg tells us that domestic beer is for after lawn mowing. Greg, I knew there was a reason that we were friends. After lawn mowing? After Not lawn during? Mowing. You know what? What about house cleaning? What do we drink for house cleaning? Wine, of course. Wine what kind of for question is that? Are you serious? <laughs> wine. Red wine, Cabernet. Uh huh. And you must turn up your music as loud as you possibly can, preferably Patty Bell. Patty LaBelle. Yeah. But that's just me that makes in my sense. house. I don't no. know how you guys, you know, right? Right? What do yeah. you clean your house to, Jeanette? I would say that wine is probably the most common for house cleaning. Yeah. Now, do you yeah. listen? Are you a music -er when you. Uh, clean the or house? a podcaster. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of times I will be listening to my, I will be cleaning the house or like painting or something like that and listening to my, uh, the Bible for normal people podcast. That's mm. like, that's my jam. Like some deep, deep biblical exegesis while I'm cleaning the house. You give me a look. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some like deep, like academic uh, perspectives on, no, I'm, on I'm, ancient scripture, you know. Look, I'm with it. <laughs> the the folks don't know your living room. I'm with it because like your bookshelf, your bookcase is amazing. And one of the things that I've always done when I go to your house is after I pour a beer, I just start messing with the books. Just poking so around. I like because, you know, the, the things that I really like talking about 
are the things that people don't, you know, I've, I want only race, religion, and politics. Like the deep your, stuff. Yeah, your living room is great for that. Yeah, so I remember I've, the first time you come over and you're, you like sit down, you have a beer, and you're like, so what do you think happens after you die? Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> we just started about. drinking. Good morning, then. Karina Suarez Garden. <laughs> um, but he, here, let's do this. Let's do this. Do you guys, what's the best thing to drink while you're cleaning your house? Put that in the chats and let us know how things are in your household. The time is 841 a.m. BTP. Now, you mow the lawn. What do you what do you sip on when you mow the lawn I, and do I, this I stuff? I can't because we have a uh, electric lawnmower, so I effectively have to use both hands. I'm one one hand is pushing, the other one is holding the cord. Oh, yeah, it's and a so corded, I'm effectively like cord. vacuuming the lawn. <laughs> so I I have to save I have to save any sort of okay. It's a before and after yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah, you get the. So you celebrate when it's all done and looking pretty. Yeah. It doesn't look pretty, but it's done. Because <laughs> I, 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 it, it's a really like kind of like a smaller like lawnmower too. And like, so it doesn't always like, you when, gotta, I, when I kind of go back and forth. You got to overlap to get that. Yeah. Also, but then if I over, if I overlap, then it's just going to take too long. So there's, there, there's sometimes like some patches that it, are just. It looks a little like a mohawk, like yeah. going down the middle of our lawn. Or something. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I do. Their lawn is radical, man. It's, Look, dude. Yeah. It's right. No, and well, and the other trick too is that if you don't get out there often enough, it becomes way harder. Yeah. You probably need to get those blades sharpened too. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> speaking of the Metro. <laughs> Victoria Hyla Molinado tells us that she once got stuck mm -hmm. after that last train and yeah. had to call and beg a friend to oh, drive yeah. me all the way to yeah, the Yeah, I've been there. We've all been there, right? You're just sitting out there. I think the last time that happened to me, I ended up sitting out there waiting for my ride and like splitting uh, my salad from the Oban pain or whatever, like the, you know, in the, yeah, uh, yeah mm -hmm. in, in Union Station. I was like splitting my salad with like a homeless dude and we're just hanging out, chatting. <laughs> it was a whole That thing. girl's first time I ate lettuce in 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy them croutons, bruh. Yeah. No, he um, goes into it. So. <laughs> So, all right, uh, let's see here. Next thing, though, next thing, committee assignments. Let's talk about committee assignments. Let's talk about committee assignments. Okay. So uh, the, um, the city of Aurora, the city council structure is a committee, has a committee structure to it. So what that means is that uh, whenever there is some kind of, <clears throat> <clears throat> whoo, today, man. I don't know what's going on. All right, so y'all, y'all donate pardon. some tissues to the show. We for all good. We're good, all good, guys. Yeah. It's the Rona. It's taking me out. No, um, it's not the Rona. I'm vaccinated, as you all know. Right. Um, so the way that it, uh, that the the city council structure works, right, is, uh, the council members are each appointed to various committees. Those committees meet at like crazy times, like four o'clock in the afternoon on a weekday. So, which makes it tricky for the general members of the general public to be able to like come out. The finance committee meets at like three o'clock on a weekday, which Good is Good morning, also... Grace Cornell. Yeah. Good morning, Grace Cornell. Um, I've... so this structure makes it really difficult for people to kind of know, like to follow along with what's going on before. Cause so then what happens is a bill goes to this committee and then the committees uh, make their recommendations. And then it goes to the committee of the whole, which is basically the city council, but we call it committee of the whole before it goes to a fun for a discussion. And then it goes to a final vote, usually the week after for the city count, like the full city council. That's where they actually vote on it and it becomes law. Right. Yeah. So, um, but uh so the assignments for those committees just came out uh, this week. And usually after an election, the mayor kind of like shuffles people around. Uh, so we've got four committees, five committees, rules and administrations and procedures, which, as mm -hmm. we noted, is all this is just rules, right? Rules, rules, rules. Right. Building and zoning and economic development is rules, another. Rules, rules, rules. Yeah. Building, rules. zoning and economic development is another committee. Public health, safety, and transportation is a third committee, and uh, infrastructure and technology, and then there's a finance uh, committee committee as well, I believe. Yep, uh, and uh, Carl Franco is in, in charge of that now that um, Bob O'Connor has left. So apparently we've decided that uh, Carl Franco is the new Bob O'Connor, which I, I think is fine. That's fine. Um, so... Uh, but but here's the thing about that 
is the committees make about the committees or the Bob O'Connor about the about the committees. Committees make sense in some regard, right? Because like, look, Aurora is a really big city. There's a lot going on, um, and it makes sense if you have uh, aldermen who kind of start to specialize and really understand things like budgets or <laughs> or you know like building and zoning issues and stuff like that, right? That's very helpful because they get really complex. Um, but uh, you, it makes it really difficult for people to follow along, right? And then what tends to happen and, and like to understand what's going on in their city before it comes to a big vote. And then uh, what happens is people go to the city council meeting and the and they're like, wait, 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 wait. I just heard about this, right? Because, right. you know, the newspaper picked it up or whatever. And they want to talk about like, uh, I don't think we should pass this thing or whatever. Um, and they're like, well, where were you when we were talking about this for the past few weeks? And the answer is, well, I didn't know about it for the past few weeks. Because right, you were talking about it amongst yourself. Uh, right. On this committee that meets right. at three o'clock in the afternoon on like Tuesday. And like I was, you know, Working. living my life. Right. right. So, um, uh, so again, there's some element to where this like committee structure really makes sense. But there are just some things that we could improve or just do better. Uh, oh, yeah. And one of them is letting people know what happens on these committee meetings, right? So, uh, you know, by uh, state law, you have to post the agendas 48 hours in advance. Got least, to. You got to. That right. is that is Open Meetings Act law. Um, and um, so, so those, they get posted two days before, but then that would require your average citizen um, or at least like news outlets or something like that to make sure that they are watching for all of those agendas coming out and letting people know about what's coming out and like and then following it along this is a that's a hint yo this is a significant time commitment so good morning aurora is gonna do the work for you you could clap for us yeah clap for us clap BTP. for us for us that's a btp clap that's a Jeanette. that's a Jeanette so, planning clap and that's a curtis clap the time is now 8 47 a.m so get excited people because uh good morning aurora is committing to uh watching the uh, committee uh, agendas as they come out and letting you know what's happening before it happens. We shall. One thing that is uh, pretty great is that right now you can actually watch these committee meetings uh, online. And and if there's one good thing that has come out of uh, the pandemic, I think that there's an elevated level of transparency on the local government Definitely. level for a lot it of... Was, I mean, we it was like the pirate plank, right? Right. The knife was in like, their back. Like, they got pushed off the plank like, damn, we got to be transparent. I guess, I guess we're on video now. <laughs> oh, um, right. So, so, which is great. So you can watch these committee meetings happen um, on online um they post them they're on because the they the, say that they're on the facebook pages democracy dies in darkness it is correct that, that is, is correct. at the top of the uh the paper I that's think, right. right yeah so that's right. <clears throat> so um uh, uh coming up this week uh, and and w here's the trick is that because these agendas only come out 48 hours in advance, I'm not going to be able to give you the whole week of like, here's what's happening, but I can give you what we've got. Um, and so this week on Monday, Infrastructure and Technology is meeting and their agenda is posted and uh, they will be talking about super exciting things. Like uh, a new cooling tower replacement for the police department. Uh, contracts for water main flushing. Okay, these are not very exciting. Um, but now you hear these things that you think, but listen, folks, those things cost money. They do. So um, 90 grand where for water is that main money flushing coming That's from? That's your money. So right. listen up um, and uh, keep, keep track of like, you can you could be thinking to yourself, for example, this next one is uh, a water main extension project on Liberty and Sarter Lane, which means if you live in that area, your street's about to be tore up, <laughs> by the way. Um, and uh, we're awarding two pretty significant contracts to Scientel for network infrastructure managed services of a citywide network infrastructure. 3.8. And that, well, that one's 1.85 million dollars and then another one another contract is going to Scientel for preventive maintenance and support of citywide security slash closed caption television uh, cameras for 1.4 million dollars basically so it's about three and a half almost three and a half million dollars or so going to Scientel for those how do I know that's really? right 
Yeah. Um, yes. That's interesting. So uh, do yourself a favor. And if you're all interested in what is happening in these committees, in the, the finance committee, you can watch that online. The city has it posted to its Facebook usually. Um, and and here's the other trick I would tell you about the uh, the agenda, like the um, committee structure and the agendas is that they don't give you any details beyond that. So <laughs> like... The, like what I read, like that, it's a three year contract to this company uh, with a possibility for a two or three year extension on these things. Uh, and one of them is like, okay, we're getting security cameras, but the other one is like citywide network infrastructure. What is that? Like, Sunintel right. provides like so many different services. Like, they do everything from like police security stuff to like drones. So, right. and I like, before we get into like before rumors start flying, I I don't think that they're buying drones. Like, don't I wouldn't worry about that. I mean that like that is not citywide network infrastructure. But um, it, it, there's not a lot of specifics here for us to go on. Like, we can't see any of the supporting. Usually, there's going to be a whole big thing of supporting paperwork relative to this contract, right? So, um. But you can check out the committee meetings. Um, so that's Monday at Infrastructure and Technology Committee. Um, Tuesday, Public Health, Safety, and Transportation is meeting on uh, also on Tuesday, City Council, um, where they are likely to be talking about um, puppies and kittens and bunnies, as we mentioned previous. Uh, and then like a green um, government, right? <laughs> Man, and on today's agenda, look, rabbit food. Puppies. <laughs> look, if they just had puppies at every meeting, I feel like people might go right. more, right? Like, I would go to that. Uh, at the I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Where's that from? Put that in the comments. If you know that if you know that reference, put that in the comments. Okay, good, because I, I do not. I need, I need, you know, me and the pop culture it's references. All it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but no, like, at, le at the very least, I feel like we all need emotional support animals, right, at the at the council meetings. I think that would be good. What would your emotional support animal be, Brent? I'm sorry, what? What would your emotional support animal be? Like, if you could just have an animal to, like, carry around with you and be like, this animal makes me feel better about the world. Because um, it would not a, be our dog. I mean, yeah, I mean, like a like a dog. Because, like, our dog is the worst. What would yours be? It would not be our dog. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. I don't know. My cat, my cat's pretty good. My cat is, she's a cuddler. Yeah, but I'd she, like an she, eagle she, on a perch in the an corner. An eagle? Yeah. A <laughs> That's I mean, a screech at people that said something wrong in committee meetings. <laughs> yeah, look. Mayor Spivey, I don't know what we're going to do. What? Arr, arr. Look, I did <clears throat> used to have this bird that was pretty amazing. Sick of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> freedom. Yeah. I did used to have a bird that was pretty amazing that could tell he was a cockatiel and he could tell if you were hungover. Really? Yes. He could tell if you were hungover um, somehow. I don't know if you smelled the alcohol on your breath or what, but like, and then he would come and he was free range. So like he had a cage, but he was never in it. And he would like come and hop on your pillow if you were hungover and he'd like sneak up to your ear and then he would just start like squawking and singing in your ear, like super, super, super loud if you were hungover. <laughs> it was the greatest thing ever. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so building and zoning is meeting on when uh, building zoning and economic development committee meeting is uh, meeting Wednesday and finance committee is meeting on Thursday. We will um, make sure to let you know what's going on the agenda for all of those. The time is 8.54 a.m. Um, okay. Now, we did pets. We did pets. We did. We did Wall of Honor. We did committee. We did, we did committee. We did Wall of Honor. We did Metro. So our notes to ourselves, guys. That's right. We're super organized on Friday mornings. Uh, as you guys will recall, we told you that the uh, Frida Kahlo Timeless exhibit. Oh, yeah. That got a really nice write-up in the paper this week. It so did. Pretty June pictures. June 5th to uh, September 6th. It's going to be at the Cleve Carney Museum of Art mm -hmm. at College DuPage, 425 Faywell Boulevard and Glen Ellen. Tics tickets are twenty six dollars and fifty cents to forty six fifty. Yep. Very cool, and that's and a great. They'll price. probably sell out. So yeah, that's a great price. Go to get go your free see, tickets. Uh, um, free to Kahlo. Yeah. Awesome. That All is right. awesome. I think is that is that the news? 
that we... is the news. But there are a couple of we got some. We got a couple of things. Of yeah, a couple of things for these people. All Kay. right. So don't forget, guys. I've been telling you about this. Uh, there's a resource fair taking place Thursday, June third, from five to eight p.m. Chapel Street, uh, Mill Creek Church. Free dinner, free haircuts, and free cleaning supplies. Organizations on hand will be Mutual Ground, Northern Illinois Food Bank, Two Rivers Head Start, Fox Valley Food for Health, and Batavia United Way Preschool Help 211. Job search assistance, health screenings, and much, much more. Shouts out to Chapel Street Church. Also, check this out. You will love this. Uh, did you know that uh, Saturday... There's the live English Conversation Group, 10.30 a.m. Registration is required. That's the Aurora Public Library Program. And today at 6 p.m., Teen Anime Club, live. Check that out. Aurora Public Library, shouts out to you guys Shout as outs well. to the library for providing programming that is uh, both useful and fun. Our dear friends of Alive Teen Center in Aurora are accepting applications for the Teen Advisory Board. Uh, it's a working board and leadership program. The main task is to work on committees that plan and execute programs and events. There are uh, application requirements. You can email addy at ady at alivecenter.org. We also post this on our Facebook page, so please go check that out. And then our friends of East Aurora Counseling had an update as well. BTP, what was that? Okay. I haven't received the, the exact dates or information just yet. So hopefully by next week, so Monday, more, we'll have some fresh information. More well, exciting stuff to come. Right. Uh, stay tuned because uh, East Aurora Counseling is a wonderful and fantastic organization dedicated to helping folks on the east side of Aurora. Mm -hmm. Also, last but not least, our friends of Harry Beast Dog Parlor are having hot rods and hot dogs Sunday, July 25th from noon to 5 p.m. A barbecue. Get it? But Barbecue. Um, but um, boom. Yeah, word up. Oh, we got a button for that. We have a button. I don't have to do it myself yeah. anymore. That's great. <laughs> Music, art, and food. And cars. It's going to be a great show. Celebrating their three-year anniversary. And dogs. Yeah, and dogs. Yep. There will presumably be dogs. 215 West Galena Boulevard. This will be a lot of fun. Shout out to Harry Beast Dog Parlor. And I'll give you a fun, interesting fact. Hmm? Osue of Harry Beast. Also, masquerades as DJ Venom. Oh, is that the connection? That's who he is. No, no. He's like a Puerto Rican Batman, <laughs> right? He's just, um, he's one guy by day, but at nighttime, he's a DJ. So, shout out to him as well. Don't forget, check out the following local businesses because they are great local businesses and they're always doing great things for our community. Society 57, located at 100 South River Street, is an awesome organization place and faith community and they also have from what i hear great avocado toast now i the best actually right now it's I... all about the sandwiches the breakfast sandwiches oh. we call them crack sandwiches in our house because they're like really 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 good but then it's like a sous vide egg and then an english muffin and with their sauce and there's arugula and there's things it's well damn yeah, there's bacon unless you get it. If you order it Jeanette style, instead <laughs> of bacon, they do avocado. Right. And you can order it just like that, too. So they have vegan options. They have, there's a vegetarian option because okay. there's vegetarian egg options, and right, cheese. Right. But yes, yeah. Oh, very cool. Yes. Um, also, Treadwell Coffee, AA Electric Contractors, and last but not least, the Family Dollar that's on Lake Street in Northgate Plaza. I want to give a shout out to them. Shout out shout to out the Family to, Dollar. Shout out to Family Dollar. Okay. Family Dollar is, at this very moment, the great American store. <laughs> America <laughs> needs explain. to... Explain. Let me, let me explain why. Let me explain right. why. Okay. The next time, all you listeners, the next time you go anywhere, gas station, Jewel Osco, wherever you go, and let's say you just want to get the great American snack or candy, right? All you want is a damn uh, Twix, a Hershey bar. Or a Snickers. Look at the price of that Snickers bar where you go somewhere. Have you seen the price of a Snickers, a regular joint? It's like a dollar eighty nine cents or two bucks some places. It has admittedly for just the normal sized one. The normal joint, not even the king not size. Not the king just size. Just the normal one. I have to admit, it's been a while since I've bought a Snickers. The bar. next time you even you don't, just don't even buy it. Just go walk down the candy aisle and you go get gas and see how much a Snickers bar is. Shout out to Family Dollar. Family Dollar. Is. Selling the Snickers bar for how much? You can fifth two for a dollar. Whoa. 
That's or they good. got the bag of Snickers. You can get a whole bag of like the minis <laughs> for a dollar. <laughs> you can get Oh, they're snapping on Twitter. You can get <laughs> a bag of any they have a wall of just straight dollar candies for a dollar. And I'm talking about huge, big amounts. For ten dollars, you can you can make Every your sugar America, high, you'll have, well, sugar have high. diabetes. Perfect. Shout out yes. to the Family Dollar. Right. That is the great American store. Sure, we're shouting out to Family Dollar. Okay. Very good. The time is 9 o'clock a.m. Jeanette? Yep. Take us out. Um, I don't have to rap this time, do I? No. Put on a beat. No. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> We're not rapping. Uh, I will. Uh, and I will take us out with this reminder that if you are a local business uh, or a local business owner here in the Aurora area and you are listening to this podcast, probably other people uh, like your potential customers are also listening to this podcast. So you should advertise with us and reach our engaged hyper local audience. Uh, you can learn more at goodmorningaurora.com slash advertise. Dora. Or- just click the button that says advertise on our website. Right. That that'll get you there. So we've got all kinds of options. We'll shout you out on the on the show here. Uh, you know, we'll post to our social media pages on your behalf, et cetera, et cetera. So check that out and make sure that you are keeping your hosts in coffee and stuff. And stuff. Yeah. Um, thank you. You're right, Dora. We did forget. We did forget. My bad. What did we forget? The twenty ninth. Uh-huh. There is a fantastic event going on. Jesse the Law Torres' boxing club has united we stride. Uh, it's a Memorial Day 5K. Perfect. Uh, registration is 25 bucks. You can go virtual or run it your own way at Wabanzi Lake Park starting at 8 o'clock a.m. Perfect. All, pro- all proceeds benefit Jesse the Law Torres' boxing club. Um, and they're a great organization the club's been closed for a year due to COVID, so this is a way for us all to get back outside get involved and get active so thank you very much to cindy and thank you very much for to uh dora for that reminder reminder. yeah yeah it's really hard to socially distance box that would be really difficult and you know you get all sweaty and like and stuff when you box. Boxing so now, the, now that we've got vaccines yeah. and all that, we boxing can, is the opposite of socially distant. It is. It's about as close <laughs> into someone's grill as you can get. So, <laughs> all right. Um. So have a great weekend to all of you wonderful people. We will see you guys back here Monday morning for more news and uh, BTP. No final comments. Anything? Oh, um, check out our Patreon at uh, Patreon dot com. Oh, we got a new supporter, Norma. Clap for Norma Peterson. Oh, yeah. oh awesome. Norma. Norma, I saw your message. Thank you. Good morning. I we saw appreciate you. that. Yeah, Patreon dot com slash Good Morning We have Aurora, a new supporter. One word. That's fabulous because we need. We have. We, we've got computers and subscriptions and coffee and mics stuff. and things. Yeah. Podcasts, man, they ain't free. Yeah, we have stuff, you guys. We have stuff Any- we need to. Handle, pay for, and give you guys the news. Yeah, yeah. and any, so any support you can give us is greatly appreciated. We love it. Uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're flushing out the exact details of the tiers, but we'll have those all kind of figured out for sure. Oh, they're figured out. Oh, they're figured out? Oh, okay. Go to, it's in the link at the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, so get stuff, you know. Thank you, Ben. I said the same thing when I saw her name. I said, yay, Norma Peterson. But I didn't say it too loud because it was early in the morning. The time is now 9.03 a.m. We went over a little bit, you we guys, did. but I hope that you guys don't mind the sounds of our voices in your ears this morning. Um, be safe, be happy, be motivated, and be blessed. Please, please, please go and support a local business. If you can. Subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, and iTunes, and uh, Apple Podcasts as well. And also, if you have any news, shouts out or the like, you can give us and send us an email at goodmorningauroraIL at gmail.com. Also, check out Buenos Dias Aurora. Follow the page. Check it out because this week's episode of Buenos Dias Aurora will not be here on Good Morning Aurora. It will be. Que lastima. It will be on Good Morning Soup. It will be on Buenos Dias Aurora's facebook page oh so we're fine so there's still it's still here it's just oh it's yeah it's, it's just it's, yeah it's just it's like a, a house it's just in another room it's like it is in another room yeah okay yeah, exactly find okay. the page the find open. the page well, and like it sign we'll up for link the it notifications yep. yes. 
Happy, have a wonderful Friday and a fantastic weekend, everyone. Thank you, Tracy. Take care of yourself and each other.